and look now, we, we're going to pass through the most secret Palestinian security agency there. We're going to say hi, <laughs> we're going to do some bad things on the walls. It's straight that uh, resistance is an action. What did you write this time? La to sole. Let's go. PA. If you want to know your enemy, look in front of you. So what happens if the PA catch you for the I'll, I'll be in jail for a week, maybe. What do you hope that the PA think when they read your graffiti? I hope that you, they know and that it's visible that we are starting to see you as enemy. So a few weeks ago, we got a call from the Palestinian government. They were wondering if we're interested in coming over to cover Palestinian Youth Week, which is sort of a week of sports and arts and culture, uh, all sorts of celebrations of the uh, young glory of the Palestinian youth. They were offering to fly us over and put us up in a five-star hotel, and we were like, what the hell is going on? This is Palestine. Don't they have better, more important things to spend their money on than us? But apparently they don't. And we're here to find out what Palestinian Youth Week's all about or maybe sack it off and just have a look at the rest of Palestine. Just in case you don't know what's going on with Palestine, and if you don't, I suggest watching the news at some point, the place is split into two. One is the Gaza Strip. That's the angry place where Hamas recently traded rockets with Israel. The second place, where we were going, is the West Bank. It's inside the West Bank that the Israelis are always building settlements. Settlements which are illegal under international law. Still though, it's definitely the more chilled out part of Palestine. The bits of the West Bank that haven't been taken over by the Israelis are run by the Palestinian Authority, a government with ambitions of being recognized on the global stage and who aim to do this by maintaining stability and acting like any other government. We'd heard that a lot of Palestinians resented the PA and saw them as an arm of Israeli rule. West Bankers were complaining that the PA's commitment to peaceful protest was a cop-out and that bureaucratic non-events like the National Youth Week detracted from the struggle of the Palestinian people. We'd been told that our five-star hotel was going to be the headquarters of National Youth Week, but when we arrived, we were the only people there. Where are all the kids with boxing gloves doing kick-ups and finger paintings? I think that we were asked to come here because there's basically a big kind of PR campaign to uh, change the way the people perceive Palestine so that people stop thinking of it as this kind of depressing goiter on the face of Israel and start thinking of it as its own state, its own kind of cosmopolitan, exciting place with cool young people who listen to Coldplay and drink lattes. The guy running the show was Jibril Rajoub. He used to be Yasser Arafat's right-hand man and has spent 17 years in Israeli jails for his major roles in decades of violent Palestinian resistance. But these days, he's a youth and sports minister. Surely he'd be able to explain to us exactly what this youth week was supposed to be. Youth is the backbone of the whole society. It's a fundamentalist element. And I think a week dedicated for the youth, it's some kind of national duty. And what kind of events are in Palestinian Youth Week? Demonstrations, speech, marathons, sport. We are planning to send one million Palestinians with one million flags to the streets, to the mountains, to the valleys. We will spread out all over the Palestinian territories. So apparently, Palestinian Youth Week was a real thing. The next morning it began in earnest as we travelled to a state building and witnessed what was without doubt the weirdest celebration of Palestinian youth imaginable. 40 unidentified Japanese people dancing to the Palestinian national anthem and waving a flag. We are Japanese. We are friends of Arab. We are friends of Palestine.
It was followed by long, passionate speeches of which I could not understand a word. Let's be honest, Palestinian National Youth Week kind of sucked and everyone there was about 60. So we ran away to try and find out what the kids in Palestine were actually doing. We're on our way to Balata, the largest refugee camp in the West Bank. So far, most of the bluster about Palestinian Youth Week, whatever that might be, is that it's going to be a peaceful thing. And generally, trying to reinvent the Palestinian protest movement as one that can appeal to an international community. I mean, there have been no suicide bombings since 2008. It seems to be supported, but bubbling under the surface is still this fury. I mean, only yesterday, rockets were fired from Gaza, and the same fury bubbles in the West Bank. does the situation make you angry? I mean, how do you feel about the Israelis surrounding you? How old were his cousins when they were all the time like playing uh, like the thief in the, in the car, but <laughs> now the, it's the Palestinian way. The, the Palestinian and the Jewish. Okay. So they start like... Uh, like cowboys and, and Indians. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys expect your future to look like? We're hoping, we're just hoping, because we, we, we don't have anything confirmed or sure about our future. But we're just hoping that it's going to get better. To be honest, the camp, surrounded by military outposts, is not an ideal place to grow up. It's not hard to see why so many of these kids go on to be involved in the Palestinian resistance. What's really remarkable about the landscapes here is that there's so little on them, partly because the Israelis don't let the Palestinians do anything with their land. So you just have these enormous swathes of land without any crops or habitation or anything like that. It just seems like such a waste. Up there on the mountains is a settlement. That is the cause of a lot of international trouble. They've all got solar panels on their roofs. Very confusing for liberals. We're on our way to Hebron a town that's heavily populated with settlers and is one of the most contested areas of land in Palestine. We were there to meet a guy called Isa, who we'd heard lives next door to a recently occupied building. I'm taking you to H2, area which is under the Israeli control. We have around 400, 500 settlers only living in this area. They don't walk through checkpoints, they don't face any difficulties here. They live as if they are living in Tel Aviv. This is the line where I just can reach. I can't go farther. What happens if you do? You're arrested? I was arrested last time I was in inside the district. Really? Yeah. Why? She's filming me. Okay. Okay, we are not filming you. You are not in the picture, don't worry. And by the law, we are allowed to take pictures for soldiers. Okay, but don't bother us. You know, you are destroying our wow. film. Okay, let's go. We have money. Houses here. If all the family leave the house, the settlers will we'll move in and take yeah, them. They will lose their home. 
tell the Israeli court decide for whom is the house, and usually it takes years. Do the kids around here go to school? Or? We have three schools inside each two. Yeah. And uh, the schools were attacked many times by settlers. They burned the school. They uprooted all the gardens. They painted uh, hatred graffiti. They attacked the kids many times. They attacked the teachers. It's not easy. You know, come and live here one week and you will see how it's very hard, you know, to stay peaceful and believe in non-violence. But I can see as Palestinians we are the most tolerant people. Where we are reacting in an unviolent way to the settlers' violence and to the Israeli soldiers' violence. They say that we are the chosen people. We deserve to live wherever we want. They come to me, the Bible gave us this land. The Bible gave us this house. The Bible gave us these olive trees. But Bible, the Bible is a holy book or it's a land or property registry book. You know, we have a spring here. One of them got a dream that it's a holy spring. It's not holy for us, it's not holy for anyone. It's a normal spring. They came to the spring, they cleaned around it, and they said it's a holy spring, it's Abraham's spring, and Palestinians are not allowed anymore to swim in this spring. This is Palestine, not Israel. Why I see Israeli flags everywhere I go? Look, you know, how they paint everywhere, you know. Why? Why it's Israel here? These guys over my shoulder are the IDF and like 20 meters uh, away from our pal's house. They're like stationed because there's a kind of house under dispute at the moment as to whether it belongs to the settlers or to some pal Palestinians. What do you think would happen if you walked across there and tried to shake the soldier's hand? Shake the soldier's hand? Yeah. It depends on the soldier. He's allowed to shoot me. Excuse me. Hi, is, is it possible for us to talk to somebody? We're not allowed to speak to you, okay, okay from the higher level. Okay. Uh, if you want to talk to someone, you can talk to the Membe, Magad, okay. the higher level of uh, soldiers. We are not allowed. Could you just tell me how long maybe you've, you've worked in this area? I can't tell you nothing. I can't interview you. Right then, Isa got a call. We'd let her find out it was from the police. They just called me and told me that I am wanted and it's better that I go to the police station or they come to arrest me from the house or from the street. And this is why he got arrested. A bunch of sympathetic National Youth Week guests are acting out in front of the military. Isa didn't seem to be doing much wrong at all. At the end of the tour, you know, some activists felt very bad and they started saying, free, free Palestine. Maybe they are accusing me that I was uh, one of the organizers for this illegal gathering, illegal demonstration. Out of settlers! Out of settlers! Out of settlers! Out of settlers! So listening to the largest call to prayer I've ever heard, which sounds like it's coming from every single angle. I wonder how it makes the settlers feel because it's, I mean, it sounds like an enormous kind of wail from the earth that this, a reminder that this land isn't Israeli, it's Palestinian. The next day, we headed to Nablus. We were looking for people who disagreed with the peaceful methods of the Palestinian Authority, people who subscribed to more extreme versions of protest. But first, we wanted to see just how people thought the PA had been politicizing peace, so we went to see our contact Mohammed. They're trying to show, like, if you go with a nonviolent resistance, Palestine will be West Bank. Yeah. You know, like, West Bank open, you have lots of opportunities. And uh, if you go for, like, armed resistance, you will see what happened in Gaza. It's made like a huge gap between both Gaza's citizens and West Bank citizens. So can you explain to us who the guy we're going to go meet is? Um, of course, his name is Hassan Savari. He's one of the Palestinian who was on the hunger strike on the Israeli prison. He just got released like nearly now seven days or eight days, I think. But he was one of the main well-known cases of the hunger strikes in Palestine. So of course, there's people doing, doing this uh, Angle strike for the rights in the Israeli prison to be treated as a prisoner, not as a border prisoner. 
In 2012, Palestinians and Israeli prisons took part in a mass hunger strike. These hunger strikers are seen as figureheads for those looking to protest the Israeli occupation peacefully. He let us come into the house and kind of walk through. It's amazing little house. We had a very, very serious interview with him. His house is like a shrine. The streets are like a shrine. His photo is absolutely everywhere. Uh, he's really become a kind of celebrity. And we came downstairs and there were like 25 kind of white people sitting very penitently. They're part of a kind of a, a tourist trade of going around um, finding out about the troubles, uh, the, the atrocity exhibition, I guess it is. We have lots of these kind of people, you know, they're like, I, for me, I consider them like as a political tourist conflict. Okay. Who are like those tours in Palestine. Um, as a tourist, but they got like involved a bit in a uh, political issue or at some time they've been forest. Okay. You know, by the tour guide to, to show them around. Oh, what, they want to go and see the pretty stuff and yes, he's like, no, 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 let's go and see, see the real this kind of people, you know, to, just mm. to show them about the reality mm. of Palestine and about the political issue in Palestine. Mohammed hooked us up with a friend of his who used to be an Islamic jihad. Uh, of all the different types of protests we've kind of seen today, this is the most extreme. بس مجرد إنك تحكي أو ينعرف إنك أنت منتمي لحركة الجهاد الإسلامي في فلسطين، هاي حكم عند الإسرائيل في السنين. بس إنك مجرد انتماء. أنا كواحد من الناس عندي أمور كتير، بس مع الأسف يعني ما بقدر نحكيها. لأن سعي ترى يحاول هاي مشكلة من مع إسرائيل ومع السلطة. خلينا نحكي أنا كفلسطيني من حق إني أقاوم الاحتلال بالطريقة اللي أنا بلاقيها مناسبة. إذا لو كان هذا الشخص العبالي لازم أقتله بقتله ما في عندي مشكلة لأنه أخذ إشي مني. If you witness the PA trying to talk to young people and encourage them to do non-violent resistance, will you talk to the young people and try and encourage them to be violent in their resistance? لا ما راح أحكي عن المقاومة المسلحة لأنه هذا الشخص رايح يتبع المقاومة الشعبية سنة سنتين بالنهاية رايح يكتشف إنها مقاومة شعبية مش رايح تحقق الانتصار اللي هو بده إياه مش رايح تحقق على الأرض اللي هو بطمح إنه هو تلقائيا رايح يرجع للمقاومة المسلحة منه لحاله من غير أي ضغط خارجي بديش أحكي عن الناس اللي الجيل الجاي بدي أحكي على ابني أنا ابني عمره سنة ونص سنة وتسعة أشهر إذا ابني بديش يكون مثلي ما بدي إياه And do you still believe that um, the violent resistance is the only answer to the Israeli occupation. We just got back to Ramallah and we got a, uh, a surprising call saying that there was tonight being led by Palestinians for Dignity and uh, another bunch of youth movements, a, uh, a kind of tutorial on lessons for engagement, rules of engagement for young Palestinians who are going to be um, involved in tomorrow's protest. Actually, inside a nondescript restaurant in a derelict area of Ramallah, what we found was about 150 international protesters attending what seemed to be a How Not to Die protest masterclass led by Palestinian veterans. I will speak a little bit about what may, will happen. Like, I don't want you to go there and then you will find that it's different you are going to participate in a resistance. It's true that it's a non-violent resistance, but you must expect that everything from the occupiers. So we just walked into this restaurant, not expecting very much. 
and instead there's about 150 people from all around the world and a guy is standing on one table explaining to all of these volunteers what exactly to do if you get arrested. They separated the groups into those who were willing to be arrested, those who weren't willing to be arrested, and they were teaching them how not to get shot, how not to get beaten up. I went and stood with the ones who were happy to be arrested and uh, they were going through again and again and again what bits of paper they should sign, what they should say, how they should bring their consulate's number, how the, they should bring a lawyer's number. And say what you want about them, man. They've, they've got integrity. Like, they're really there to, happy to put themselves on the line for this cause, which by geography isn't theirs, but they really believe by morality is. But now we know the plans for tomorrow. And you know what? All Gibral's plans seem to be real. I mean, there actually seems to be some demonstrations going on tomorrow. There's been a warning by the Israeli authorities that, um, that no Israelis can take part in it, otherwise they'll suffer like serious uh, repercussions. So yeah, now it's suddenly looking like tomorrow might be a big day. It certainly will be for the arrestables. Last night we went to this restaurant where there was this massive meeting happening and in there there were loads of kind of international activists and observers and they've all been dotted off around the West Bank to protest but then afterwards we found out that they were being used as a diversion because they would have depleted the Israeli troops. So we're at the real protest in Berlin with a few of the arrestable internationals and a bunch of uh, pretty passionate Palestinians. It'd be nice if we had a gas mask between us. The protesters' plan was basically to bum around in a convoy of about 30 vans and cars, shutting down the motorways leading to Israeli settlements. Yeah, I think we might be getting close. Let's hit the motorway. I don't know if this is the road they're going to try and stop. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, this is the road we're trying to stop. Check it out. It's a massive fucking motorway. Watch out. Okay, they're already tear gassing. We've been here for about 30 seconds, they're already dropping off some fucking gas. Yeah, it looks like they're not fucking around. They seem to have successfully shut down the motorway. I guess we're going to see what the retaliation is going to be. There we go, there's the retaliation. Loads of fucking tear gas. I mean, I've got to say, it's a pretty successful dispersion technique. Everyone's gone back now. They're still firing more gas. Yeah, they're just firing loads and loads of gas at us. All right, so the convoy all heading down there. Convoy! I don't know, there's a lot of confusion at the moment. A lot of people milling in between cars, a lot of people shouting. The guy in the car is an Israeli settler. He was holding his own personal demonstration against the protesters by driving backwards and forwards through their march. Okay, so we're just kind of speeding around these bumpy roads. I've got no idea where we're going. There's a whole bunch of protesters down there, stopping the traffic, being pretty direct with them. I guess we're jumping up. All right, so they've succeeded. They've managed to lock down the road. They've two put like chains over it at two spots. I don't know how long it's going to be before the army show up and start gassing everyone. They're not actually trying to disrupt everything for an incredibly long amount of time. It's we can lock down this road because we have some kind of authority within ourselves. Do you know where the army are? Huh? Do you know where the army are? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, which direction is that? Is that them? My yes. Army. The army moved in and everyone fell back onto the buses. Everyone's a bit confused. It seems to be the technique is to go from spot to spot, shutting down a road, waiting for the police to arrive, leaving, shutting down the road, waiting for the army to arrive, leaving. A mile down the road, though, the convoy was pulled over by the military. They've taken the keys from the car and the whole convoy has been stopped. 
I'm guessing that's the end of uh, the protest for the day. I'm just going to sweat to death in this box with 500 people. After about 30 minutes, we were let out of the van. The protesters were ushered in one direction while we were pushed in another. So the vibe here is pretty hairy. We have no idea what's going on. I mean, our gang are disappearing over the hill. Can you come with me? Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, Mats, Mats, we got left. Thank you. Thanks very much. So we've luckily found someone who's given us a lift. Otherwise, we'd just be in the middle of the desert. I work for an Israeli human rights organization. We uh, okay. try to document um, demonstrations, protests in the West Bank. When you look at the response of the Israeli security forces to demonstrations and, and protests in the West Bank, you see that there is an exaggerated use of crowd control weapons, very often uh, in ways that are extremely dangerous and in some cases uh, cause injuries and, and death of protesters. There's a very, very uh, extreme and uh, draconian restriction on the ability to demonstrate. So Palestinians are actually prohibited from protesting in the West Bank by an Israeli military order that was signed in 1967, which then obviously allows the security forces quite a wide ability to disperse them even when there's no violence. She dropped us off at a petrol station where the protesters were regrouping. What's happened already so far today? Uh, it's an expansion of the popular resistance. We started already last month to block roads and uh, demonstrate in settlements, and this is a continuation. What do you hope to achieve by chaining well, up the this roads? Is actually, we're saying basically that as far as Palestinians are living under occupation, apartheid, and colonization, as far as they are suffering of settlers' attack and settlement expansion, we are not going to let Israeli and settlers' lives go on the normal, continue as normal. So we want to disrupt the lives of the colonialists and the settlers, uh, and we want to make a message that we're not going to sit aside while our the country is colonized. Our convoy was just one of many West Bank protests that day. While we'd been getting gassed on the motorway, Jibra Rajub had been getting gassed in Jericho. Uh, today, what happened? is the normal habit by the Israelis. They use gas, sound, grenades, and dirty water to disperse a civilized, a peaceful protest. The Israelis insist to remain Israelis. And how do you think the journalists that you brought over for National Youth Week perceived the events in Jericho today? I'm satisfied. I appreciate their coming, sharing with us experience, including tear gas experience. I'm pretty sure that they will go back to their countries, tell them, tell their peoples what they did see. And what do you think of those who criticize the PA, who say that by encouraging peaceful protest, uh, you're actually playing into the hands of the Israelis? Listen, I think the court is open. They can use armed struggle. They can do whatever they want. And everybody can. Uh, struggle on the way that he believes or thinks to be fruitful and productive for our cause. I myself, uh, part of the uh, military struggle generation, I was one of the uh, militants who fought, who killed Israelis, spent 17 years in Israeli jails. I'm proud of my history. I think now uh, the non-violence struggle is the most effective, productive mean to assure national aspirations. Rajoub may have been preaching peaceful protests, but at this moment, in the other Palestinian territory of Gaza, Israel and Hamas were trading missiles with a ferocity unseen in years. As the West Bank watched this unfold on their TVs, people headed back onto the streets and marched towards Israeli settlements. 
They were stopped by armed members of the Palestinian Authority, fueling the criticism that the PA were more loyal to the Israelis than they were to the Palestinians. We headed towards Beit Il settlement in uh, northern Ramallah, and we were surprised by the PA forces uh, blocking the way. And behind the PA forces, uh, two meters behind the PA forces, there were Israeli army, basically. So, so they were blocking the road. Then everyone became angry, very angry. You could see anger in, the, in, in people's eyes. What the hell are they doing? They're blocking us from reaching the deal to, to express our anger against what's going on in Gaza. And basically, they were the occupation hand. They are just afraid of an uprising here. And they are doing all that they got to prevent, uh, to prevent an uprising, a street uprising, to prevent a sacrifice, a, a martyr. They don't want blood because they know that there will be blood then there will be an intifada. With war breaking out in Gaza, Palestinian National Youth Week seemed a long time ago. Instead of uniting the Palestinians in front of global journalists, the week had highlighted the differences between your average West Banker and the PA. The mood seemed to suggest that the Palestinian people were crying out for two revolutions, one against Israel and another against the Palestinian Authority themselves. I think that the West Bank needs to be needs to be burned with fire, meaning fire of intifada and uprising against the population, the popular one. That's what I that's what I want to see and would like to see. But by saying these things to people in Palestine, you're putting yourself on the most wanted list of not only the PA but the Israelis. So maybe, but uh, that's how it shall be. It shall be on fire.